Hello everybody, Dr. Lori Langdon, board certified pediatrician here with a new topic. I thought I'd already done this, but I couldn't find it. And that is abscesses. Let's talk about that. One of the Southern phrases meaning an abscess is rising, which I think is meant to represent rising, a spot on the skin that is rising. So abscesses can often be caused by this germ called MRSA, which stands for methicillin resistant staph aureus. And it can be a really bad player. Most of the time, it's terrifying if you Google it, most of the time MRSA in children is skin only, but can be significant, significant on the skin and can go from zero to 60. So fast you could just have basically no more than a pimple and within several hours harder larger more painful red tender pus beneath the skin lots of pressure the child's very uncomfortable and so obviously call us you need to see your pediatrician if you have concerns for a risin or an abscess they can happen anywhere that the skin has breakdown so we often see them in babies in the diaper area just because the skin got sore or raw and once that the integrity of the skin layer is compromised then anything can happen and even normal germs that live on the skin can cause trouble and even abscesses by crawling in and creating an infection in that spot that was compromised so sometimes we'll see abscesses where the knee pads for volleyball players rubbed or where bra straps may have rubbed or in babies where the diaper may have rubbed or they had a bad diaper rash and then it got a secondary infection so if you have an area that's increasingly red raised tender, feels like there's pus maybe in there. You can see it sort of coming to a head. We recommend really not doing home surgery. Now, if it's a very small spot, you could try putting a warm compress on it and sometimes the body will naturally uh, sort of help it come to a head and the pus will come out on its own. And then actually, as gross as it is, that relieves a lot of the pressure. And so the child may not be in as much pain. But with MRSA, typically they need antibiotics to clear it up. So I was gonna tell you what might would happen if you did have this issue and came into the office. Most general pediatricians like myself do not feel comfortable doing a very large, invasive, deep uh, evacuation of an abscess. Now we will very commonly do one that's more on the surface. So typically what would happen in my office, it's often a baby or a toddler that's still in diapers and there's this large abscess on one of their buttocks and we will get people to help hold. We'll sometimes use a numbing gel on top or some folks use an injectable lidocaine to numb it a little bit. And then uh, we'll sterilize the surface usually with betadine swabs about three times in a row. I sometimes use an alcohol wipe just so I can see what I'm doing. It's much easier and much more likely to be successful if this abscess has sort of come to a head so we know where to make a tiny incision. Um, some people use a scalpel. Typically I'll use an 18 gauge needle because it's got that beveled edge that's very sharp and it's very fast. And we just make a tiny little incision to give an area for all that pus to come out. And then with um, sterile gauze, we'll push around it and get some of the pus out and then collect that pus, that period material on a culture swab so then we can send it to the lab. What we're looking for is we say ID and sensitivities. That means identification, what organism is this, and sensitivities, which antibiotics will work against this infection. And then after that, we would clean the area up, try to get all the pus out that we could. Certainly the toddler is not enjoying this, but they typically recover very quickly. And then we'll apply some antibiotic ointment and maybe a bandage depending on the location and scenario. Then we will usually go ahead and start antibiotics right then. And if the area did look like one of those fast growing volcanoes of an abscess, and that's sort of acting, we would say it's acting like MRSA, we would go ahead and start an antibiotic that is usually effective against MRSA. Now our top two contenders currently are Septra, which is trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, or clindamycin. Now, they both have pros and cons, and, and sometimes you have to switch midstream after you get your ID and sensitivities back. Clindamycin is one of the most foul-tasting liquid medicines known to man, and it's typically dosed four times a day. So it's not a fantastic option, but we often need to use it. Uh, clindamycin can also, as many antibiotics can, kill very uh, important beneficial bacteria in the gut. So it's important to take probiotics or eat a lot of yogurt while you're on a course of antibiotics, especially something like clindamycin that could even lead to C. difficile and craziness like that. So um, the Bactrim or Septra, the trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, it's only dosed twice a day and probably isn't quite as nasty, not delicious, but not as bad as clindamycin. But then Septra can also rarely lead to complications like Steven Johnson syndrome and can make you more photosensitive, more likely to burn in sunlight. So there's not a great, great, 
antibiotic at all, anyway, ever, but those are usually our most commonly used ones that are both available in a liquid and are more often successful against MRSA. And then we would have the parent usually soak the area two or three times a day in warm soapy water, keep some antibiotic ointment on there. We often prescribe mupirocin for that, keep it bandaged both for protection from additional germs not getting in, but also to catch any discharge that may come out, which is a good thing. It would be nice if that tiny little incision we made stays open so any additional pus that accumulates purulent material will have a route out uh, so it won't be as painful when it all that pressure builds up. And then once we get the culture ID and sensitivities back, we can call the parent and say they're on the right antibiotic or they're not and we need to change it. And then we can e-prescribe the new one into their pharmacy. So a lot of parents have questions about abscesses. If the child has no fever, it's not tender, and it's tiny, it's still okay to just use warm wet washcloths. Uh, but anytime you're concerned, call your pediatrician. Sometimes you can even figure out a way to send in a picture, which can be helpful. We didn't used to have those capabilities, you know, when I was first uh, in residency and practicing, but now you can send us a photo and we can see how concerning it looks. I know I would not, and most pediatricians would not ever consider sending in antibiotics without seeing you in person. And part of the reason now you understand is that we really want to get that ID and sensitivity of the organism from the incision and drainage procedure in the office. And I hope that cleared up some questions you may have had about abscesses or risins. And if you have any additional questions, let me know. And as always, please like and subscribe. And uh, in the comments, feel free to ask any additional questions. Thanks so much.